On this episode of the Ask Mike Ronald Show, we talk about our systemized approach to how we are going to handle the reopening of our physical therapy clinic and our gym from the COVID pandemic and a bunch of tips on what you can do as well. The Ask Mike Reinhold Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We are joining you from our homes again during our self-quarantine uh, stay-at-home order from Champion PT and Performance up in Boston, Mass. I'm here with Lisa Russell, Lenny Macrina, Mike Scaduto, Dan Pope, answering all your physical therapy, fitness, sports, performance, business, career advice, any questions that you guys may have. As always, go to MikeRound.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us questions too and keep them coming. So I, I, we, have, we definitely have gotten more questions during the quarantine period. So people are probably bored or, uh, and at home and, and, and more inquisitive. So keep them coming. They've been awesome. Uh, we have a, a, a nice question today that's probably going to be timely for a lot of people. I know it's certainly going to be timely for us in Massachusetts at Champion, but our question today comes from Lisa from Indianapolis. And I, w- I wonder what her situation is, but she asked, what should practices be doing now to prepare to reopen after the COVID shutdown, right? And, and it's a great question, right? And um, I, I, let's answer this from the physical therapy perspective. You know, maybe we'll throw in some pearls from fitness here and there, but, um, but yeah, what, what can people be doing now? We're shut down, right? That's the scenario right? And we're going to get ready. Hopefully our government, I know in the state of Massachusetts, we're talking about some guidelines. Hopefully we're going to get plenty of heads up on some, some of the restrictions that we're going to have to follow, right? But that's almost like, that's like the, that's, that's what you have to follow. I think there's a bunch of other things we can do to best prepare as well. So who wants to start this one? I guess I will, because you and I are (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm talking multiple times a day trying to figure this out. I mean, we're, we are scouring the web. We are trying to read what states around us are impl- uh, implementing. Um, we are way behind other states because our situation in Massachusetts has been so bad. So it's, we, you know, we kind of follow New York, New Jersey, but, you know, New Hampshire and Rhode Island and Connecticut are opening. And so we're trying to see what their government is doing and then seeing how it can affect us. So with that, I would say look around states in your area, states that have similar case loads of, um, you know, viruses and try to figure out how it can apply to you. With that, it looks like masks, uh, some kind of face covering is going to be critical, right? So you're going to have to have, your staff is going to have to wear them. You're going to have to have new practices in place in your facility where people coming in are going to have to wear something. Um, You're going to have to have hand sanitizer, clean hands all the time, a ton of soap, right? Um, You're going to have to maybe, maybe consider taking uh, temperatures, right? I think uh, airlines are doing that right now. So we have purchased some infrared thermometers that are um, arriving soon. So we're going to try to monitor people, try to monitor their symptoms. Uh, You may have to update your paperwork, right? So now people uh, may become, yeah, there you go, uh, some kind of, Perfect. You are a human. You are the, the average human temperature. Um, although I, th- I thought they increased the temperature of the human is now a little higher now, but I, I don't know. So we're using CDC guidelines and what airlines are using too. I think it's 100.4 is considered a critical number, but you do your own research. Um, uh, what, where was I talking about? Oh, we're talking about infrared thermometers. So we, you have to monitor that, monitor symptoms. Um, you can have to monitor your staff and what, how they feel and what you, know, you have enough supplies for them. Um, what happens if somebody gets sick? What are the implications if a client gets sick, if a staff member gets sick? Uh, what, you're going to have to be cleaning. Do you shut down? You're going to be planning for that. So there's so many different things that you're going to have to really consider. And that's just, I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I go off my train of thought. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you're taking notes, Len, because uh, we're going to have to do all those things ourselves, right? So I know yeah. that was uh, that was like a big brainstorm session, which is yeah. probably pretty helpful. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I you know, Lenny brought up a, a lot of points that are going to 
I think a lot of them are going to be regulation based, right? Like, so I think one of the first things you need to decide right now, if you're, you're trying to open up a place is your level of comfort with uh, the minimum regulation. So say, for example, like you're in a state that says masks are optional right? I think you need to then consider yourself that what do you think is comfortable? I think it's completely okay for you to require a mask if you want to, right? So at Champion, I'll just, you know, where our physical therapy is open, pretty restricted now, but we're open a little bit. And in the state of Massachusetts, it's recommended, or it was at the time a little bit, I think it's not now, but it was recommended you wear a mask, but you didn't have to, right? Super vague, right? So we just required it, right? Because we thought it was the right thing to do. So uh, be prepared to be looking up your state regulations. And Lenny kind of said this right here is look at your surrounding states because i know in new england would they've formed like a, a, a pack because if you're mass in rhode island and new hampshire right and you're those states and you're all different recommendations we all live within a half hour of all, of all those states right so people are going to be bouncing around it's going to be super confusing so look at your surrounding states to start getting some heads up on the regulations and then decide what if you're com- comfortable with that or if you want to make your regula- regulations even tighter So I like that. Um, What else? Anybody else have anything for this? I know this is kind of a business question and Lenny and I have been doing it. And and heck, if you guys have comments as employees, right? Like what you want to see employers and stuff doing and and stuff, let us know too. But Dan, what do you got? I know we're in maybe a little bit different situation because we're out of network providers. um, But I think it would also be important for in-network as well is that you probably want to make sure you're, if you haven't been doing this already, checking in with your patients, checking in with maybe some of your referral sources, you know, how the surgeon's doing, you know, what's going on in terms of you guys seeing more patients eventually, you know, just to make sure that when you open the doors, you actually have hopefully some business, you know, you're not just prepared, uh, you know, against COVID. You're also able to make some income, I guess, which is all the goal. Um, yeah. That's good. That's, that's great, Dan. And that's, you should be using this opportunity to stay in touch with people to see how you can help. We're a service-based industry. You got you gotta kind of keep that in mind here. And remember this, there's going to be two things that your referral sources and your patients are going to want to see, right? One is, are you open or not? That's it, right? That one's pretty easy, but this is healthcare. They have issues. They need to come in. Are you open or not? That's easy. But what they really want, they want to see that you have a plan in place that they are going to be safe in your facility and that you ha- you're going to have to figure out a way to articulate that to both your referral sources and your potential patients, both new and returning, right? So that's one of the big things you're preparing for now is how can I get this message across that you can be comfortable at our facility when we're allowed to open again. I think that's huge. So, uh, Mike, what did, did you have uh, some uh, tips in there? Yeah, I was just going to go along those same lines. I think there is going to be some level of anxiety from from the patient's perspective going back into a healthcare setting, whether it's an outpatient physical therapy clinic or just a regular doctor's office. So I think um, you have to have policies in place that are clear and be able to articulate that to the patient to put them at ease and then follow through with those policies when you're there. And, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult and you have to be strict um, uh, with the policies. And uh, I think that's in everyone's best interest and it's in the company's best interest in the long run. So um, having policies, communicating them to the patient effectively, um, communicating them to the other employees effectively. Um, and I think that's something that, that Champion did a really good job throughout was the communication aspect of, of what's changing um, and and what's still unknown, I guess so you can still have some questions, um, but you're working to address those. Yeah. And remember, we're a service-based industry. You're going to have a little empathy here with our, with these people here and everybody's in a different situation. If you're one of those people that think this is all like fake and like nobody's going to really get sick and stuff like that, you better not be articulating that to anybody, right? Because your clients <laughs> probably think the opposite, right? So you got to be really careful. So, and, and like Mike said, be, this is the time to be harsh, right? Two scenarios again. We, uh, we haven't talked about this yet. I, this, I, we'll assume this is us talking about it right now, Mike, but uh, so we have one scenario, one of Mike's patients, like we, we get the mass situation, just I'm in the room, I'm working on one person and they're super conscious of of this and, and already a little skittish being there and a patient just walks in and walks like right by us like two feet by us and just walks in no mask or anything like that and i'm like hey you got a mask and he's like oh yeah 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 no i get it right here i'm like okay well <laughs> are you gonna use it right and so so we kind of chewed him out a little bit yeah and i think that's appropriate to do uh i think it's definitely remind people of the policies i will say that um potentially people don't read signs that are on the door <laughs> 
Um, so even if you text them beforehand, it may be a good idea to remind them as soon as they get there. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's a tough situation because right. people, yeah. no, well, people maybe breeze through the, like the signs and stuff that are on the door. And uh, I guess it's up to the, the clinic to enforce the policy at, at that point. Yeah. I, but hopefully you tell them once and if you, if you, if you make it, you know, stern or strict enough. It's, I right. think that like that, for example, that patient has been completely fine. Now, on the other hand, a similar situation with a PT student that will be nameless. We only have one right now, right? But uh, he did the same thing. He walked right in. He didn't have his mask on. It was like in his backpack. So I was just like, hey, you can put your mask on? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, ah, especially as a PT, it's not your first day. Like, no excuse. You got to be careful. Yeah. So, so we're going to be in that. So, uh, so, yeah, this is the first time we've talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna slap you that, Mike. Sorry, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I it's okay to be stern. So, all right, I'm gonna let you in on Champions five step system for reopening. Ready? Like this, this is how I think. Right? We're doing five things to prepare. Right? One, we're preparing our facility. Right? And that's the big thing. Do you have cleaning supplies? Do you have appropriate spacing? Do you have everything you need to be able to start business? When this first happened, we had a staff meeting. We we're still in person because you know we, we were just so so brand new. But one of the first things we said, Lenny and I were talking about it to the staff, and we said, "Hey, if this is like a zombie apocalypse, right? If zombie apocalypse, the number one resource is probably going to be food, right? Well, we're we're in a pandemic, a, a health pandemic right now. Our number one resource right now is cleaning supplies. If Champion runs out of cleaning supplies, we're going to starve." And then we have to close. If we, if, if we don't have hand sanitizer, we don't have cleaning supplies, we have to close because then we can't conduct our business. So prepare your facility and get that stuff ahead of time. If you haven't done it now, it's probably too late. Good luck. But like prepare your facility. That's number one. Two, prepare your systems, right? So what is your cleaning system? What is your inventory system? What is your staff check-in system where they come in? We're going to answer three questions. Do you have a fever? Do you feel ill? Were you around anybody that feels ill or has COVID? It's got to be no, no, no temperature check sign. You get to work today, right? Like those sorts of things. Prepare your systems with clients, same things. Prepare updates to your professional liability uh, waivers that you're going to have, right? Because we're going to now have to include viruses and pandemics to our liabilities. We've never had to do that before, right? So prepare your facility, prepare your systems. Three, prepare your staff, right? Don't assume that your staff knows that A, the patient needs to come in with a mask and B, that they have the power to yell at them if they didn't wear the mask in, like, like we were just kind of saying. So prepare your staff on the protocols, the cleaning system, everything you need to know so that we are top notch, right? We have to convince the outside world that you're going to be safe in our facility, right? Four then comes up to that prepare your clients now, your patients, right? So that's sending out emails, sending you know, info out to your referral sources. Here is how we're going to assure your safety. That's an important one, right? And then lastly, this is the curveball: prepare to act quickly when things change, right? And I know Lenny and I have learned several lessons in the last few months that we will definitely do differently next pandemic, right? <laughs> it's like, hopefully that never happens, right? But we've learned a lot and you have to prepare to act quickly. Okay. So that's our five step system to prepare for this. And trust me, there's a lot that goes into each one, but hopefully that all makes sense. Right. Mike, did you wave? Did you have a little something? Oh, five steps. Five steps. Five, that's our five step champion COVID reopening activation plan systemized fashion <laughs> system. Perfect. It's a, a lead magnet. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe do, do I always think lead magnet? Do I, do I, I always think like blog post headlines, but uh, gotta sign yeah. up. Gotta sign up. <laughs> that's that's how I think. We're doing a free webinar tomorrow. <laughs> uh, like that, that's just uh, that's just how I think. I'm very systems mindset based thing. But if you do that, you cover all your bases. So, uh, so Joe, uh, no, that's not Joe. That's Lindsay. Lindsay, I hope Indianapolis isn't as bad as Boston, but hopefully you do the right thing and you and you introduce this well, introduce this well, and hopefully some of these tips can be applied really to anybody, both fitness, physical therapy. I mean, all the same stuff at the gym too. So, uh, great question. Thank you so much, everyone. Be safe. Thank you so much during this time to continue to listen. Be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, Spotify head to our website, ask us more questions, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.